How many goblins could a goblin gob if a goblin could gob goblins? This video is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. If you're looking for cards in the US, look no further as you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA to get you 5% off anything on the site. Or if you're in Canada like me, you can use the same promo code at Multizone to get 10% off your orders of singles. If cards aren't what you're looking for, Original Magic Art has playmats, tokens, and sweet art that you can use that same promo code to help you get 5% off your order there. If you're looking to bling out your cards, using Alter Sleeves is a great way to do so, and you can click the affiliate link in my About section to help out the channel as you make an order. And if you just want to help out the channel, you can always consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month and join the generic Goblin Gang. Hey gang, I just want to bring to your attention that Johannes Voss and Original Magic Art are teaming up. This will be the first time that some of his beautiful art for cards like Gift of Orzova, The Dog Plains, The Kaldheim Island, Prismatic Bridge, and Carpet of Flowers are available on playmats. The Kickstarter is running from September 13th until October 13th, and you can help support it and my channel at the same time by using the affiliate link below. Hey gang and welcome back. Today's game finds us back at Red Dragon Games in Ottawa, and I'm joined by some lovable scamps. Martin is playing his Usury deck, keeping the Locust God, Two Islands, Sulphur Falls, Mana Drain, Mystical Tutor, and Wheel of Fortune. Nick is playing his Cosma deck, keeping Rogue's Passage, Two Islands, Reliquary Tower, Wayfarer's Bobble, Mind Stone, and Blue Sun Zenith. Max is playing his Rebecca and Ishtaki deck, keeping Scavenger Grounds, Excavation Technique, Ornithopter of Paradise, Foundry Inspector, Forsaken Monument, Throne of Geth, and Tomb of the Spirit Dragon. I've borrowed Max's Exodus Auric Overlord deck, keeping Coalition Relic, Dark Ritual, Solemn Simulacrum, Swamp, Austere Command, Tragic Arrogance, and Dragon Skull Summit. Martin wins the die roll and starts us off. For the first land of the game, he plays an island. Max plays a Scavenger Grounds and passes. Nick plays an island and taps it for one for Wayfarer's Bobble. I just play a Swamp. Martin has a Sulphur Falls come in untapped and passes to Max. Max plays his Tomb of the Spirit Dragon and then taps both lands to cast Ornithopter of Paradise. Nick plays another island, paying two to crack his bauble and go and find a basic and passes to me. I play a mountain and then tap it and the swamp. I cast Dark Ritual with my black mana and use the three plus the red to cast Solemn Simulacrum. Martin kicks me in the teeth though as he counters it with Mana Drain and with nothing else, I pass turn. Martin gets four colorless in his main phase and plays an island. He uses the floating mana plus taps two for Locust God, passing a max. Max taps three mana for Foundry Inspector, passing. Nick plays a Reliquary Tower and taps two for Mindstone. He then brings up the vehicle half of his commander, the Omen Keel, and passes to me. I play a Dragon Skull Summit for turn, and tap 2 for Orzov Signet. I then pass, and Martin casts a Mystical Tutor, going into his library to find a Jessica's Will and put it on top. Martin draws the Will and makes an Insect Token from the Locust God. He plays a Bloodstained Mire and goes at Nick for 1 with the Insect Token, passing. Max draws and plays a Plains. Max then taps enough, counting in the reduction from the Inspector, to cast a Forsaken Monument. He then swings the Inspector at Martin, but it bounces off the Locust God, and Max passes. Nick casts Guardian of Tazim in his main phase, and plays an Island for turn. This lets him tap down the Locust God with the Landfall trigger, and he taps the Sphinx to crew up the Omen Keel. He then goes at Max, who takes the hit, and Max exiles his top three cards. Nick then passes turn. I draw, casting Coalition Relic in my main phase. Martin at this point cracks his mire to go and find a tap Steam Vents, losing one. I then play out a tapped Kazool's Cliffs and pass to Martin. Martin draws and makes a Locust token. Nick reminds him that the Locust God should still be tapped, and Martin then uses Jessica's Will to make some mana based on his opponent's hand size, and the biggest hand at this point is Nick with seven. Using five of that, Martin then casts a Mana Geyser, making 11 more red mana. He then uses 3 of it for Wheel of Fortune. We all pitch our hand and draw a fresh 7, with Martin making 7 insect tokens from the Locust God. 
He plays a volcanic island as his land for turn, and follows up with a soul ring from some of his floating mana. He uses another 3 for Fiery Gambit, and gets rolling for the flips. He fails his first one though, and the spell does nothing. He then brings out Usri, and moving to combat, goes at Max with 6 insect tokens. Max takes the hit, and Martin passes. Max plays Phyrexia's Khor's land for turn, and taps 3 lands which makes a total of 6 mana because of the monument, and uses it for Ugin the Ineffable, gaining 2 life from the monument trigger. He then plays out a Liquid Metal Torque for free because of Ugin's cost reduction, gaining 2 more life. We then see a Chief of the Foundry, gaining him 2 further life, and he needs only pay 1 for a Golden Guardian because of all the colorless reduction he has, and gains 2 more life. Once that's resolved, he down takes Ugin to blow up the Locust God, and then passes turn. Nick taps enough mana to play a Gearport Orrery in his main phase, and then plays two of his stolen lands from Max. He taps down the Golden Guardian and Foundry Inspector on Max's side of the board thanks to the landfall triggers. Nick then casts a Burnished Heart, and crews up the Omen Keel by tapping it. Moving to combat, he hits me for three, and I X all my top three cards. I draw, and play out a Battlefield Forge, and then a Badlands. I tap 2 mana for Boros Signet, and then take 1 from the Forge to cast Exodus or Eek Overlord, and Martin decides to continue punishing me for just existing as he counters it with an Arcane Denial. I pass turn. I draw 2 on Martin's upkeep while he draws 1, and then draws in his draw step. He plays a Training Center, and a tap Myriad Landscape as his lands return, and moves to recast the Locust God, which he'd return to hand at the end of Max's turn after Max had destroyed it. I respond to this by casting Tybalt's Trickery, but Martin counters that as well with Fierce Guardianship for free because Usri is out. Why do I even bother casting spells? Moving to combat, Usri and 6 insect tokens go at Max. Martin obviously picks to flip 5 times like a gentleman, and rolls because we don't have any coins among us. He gets 2 wins and 3 fails, drawing 2 cards and then taking 6. He also makes 2 more insect tokens. Max then blocks Usri with the surprisingly big Ornithopter, taking out Martin's commander, but still takes 6 damage. Max untaps and plays the Sungrass Prairie as his land drop. He upticks Ugin, making a Spirit token and exiling his top card of his library. He then plays out Rebek, which has this stuff gaining protection from 2, 3, 4, and 5 converted mana costs. He then drops his other commander, Ish Taki, and makes a Golem token as it enters. With nothing else, he passes to Nick. Nick plays an island for turn, and then a Vault of Champions from the Exiled cards. He taps down the Locust God again with the Guardian trigger for the island, and taps her back with his Vault trigger. He then crews up the Omen Keel with his Burnished Heart, and hits me for 3 again, exiling my top 3. Nick then passes to me. I draw for turn, and cast a Legion's Landing, making a token as it comes in. I then put 2 into the X of Temple of Vengeance, and Martin takes me up on this deal, while Max and Nick say no. This has me making 4 tokens, and Martin makes 2. I then swing 4 of them at Nick, which transforms Legion's Landing into Adanto the first fort. Nick blocks one with the Guardian, but still takes 3. Martin plays a Mountain, and Reliquary Towers his land drop. He then casts Pyromancer Goggles, and recasts Usri once that's resolved. He moves to combat, swinging 6 of his tokens at Ugin, which has Max blocking one of. Ugin is then taken out as the insects eat him alive, and he passes to Max. Max brings out a dig site engineer in his main phase, and needs only pay 1 for a junk diver. He gains 2 life from the monument, and pays for the engineer trigger to make a construct token. Moving to combat, he sends the golem at Nick, the inspector at me, and the ornithopter and chief at Martin. Nick takes 6, I take 5, and Martin takes 8. Max then passes turn. At the end of turn, Nick casts Word of Invention where X is a lot. Martin decides to fork it, using the goggles for mana, and gets 2 copies of Word of Invention. He tutors for a midnight clock, put into the field, and then puts out a Krark's thumb. Nick then finds his card, putting in a Sky Sovereign console flagship, and he bolts Usri as it enters. Nick untaps, and Martin adds a counter to his clock. Nick then plays an island, and taps on each to key with Guardian Trigger. Nick then sacks his Mindstone, drawing a card. 
He taps the Guardian to croup the Sky Sovereign and goes at me for 6. He also gets an on attack trigger, dealing 3 to each to Kai, and Nick then exiles my top 6 card as his vehicle connects. He hits 4 lands out of the 6, and in his post combat main phase, casts an Oblivion Sower and targets me with the on cast trigger. I hit only 1 land from those 4, but Nick still gets to dump all of those lands that he's exiled. From. He also gets to tap down 7 creatures from those lands coming in. He also gets to scry 1 from my stolen Temple of Malice, and passes while deciding what to do with it. Martin adds another counter on his clock during my upkeep, and I tap enough mana to cast a Rousing Refrain and target Nick. I get 5 red mana, and exile the spell with suspend counters. I then put to stack a Wheel of Misfortune because... I didn't learn my first time! And we all pick our numbers secretly. Martin picks 7, Max and I have chosen 5, and Nick picks 0. This has Martin losing 7 life, and then he, Max, and I wheel, while Nick rightly gets nothing after stealing all my lands this game. Martin also makes more insect tokens from the Locust God, and I then drop a Mountain for turn, followed by a Spine Rock Knoll. I get to hide away one of my top 4 cards, and once that's done, I cast a Worn Power Stone. I then sacrifice some tokens to help cast Awaken the Blood Avatar for only a black and a red. This has each opponent sacrificing a creature, and I make a 3-6 demon token. I then pass to Martin. Martin adds his third counter to the clock, and draws and makes another insect token. He plays an island, and then a flooded strand. He taps enough to play out Oaken, who as it enters, lets him go and find his Ender Split, and puts them to hand. He then casts the Eyeball, and moves to combat. He rolls two dice because of the thumb being out, and wins one of them using that. He draws a card, and doubles Oaken's power, and then makes an Insect Token. He fails the second set of rolls though, and moves to Oaken's trigger to flip. He gets a lot of wins, with Max keeping track of them, but unfortunately only gets a total of 4. He then declares he'll swing his Insect Token Swarm at Max, which Max blocks one of with his Junk Diver. Max then takes 22. Moving to his second main phase, Martin uses the Goggles to pay for a Mana Clash. This card is just... stupid, and they roll with both hitting Tails and taking 1, even with Martin's extra 1. The second one has Max taking 1, and they repeat. Martin then takes one in the next set, and they both then take one in the following one, and keep going typically with both of them taking one. They finally hit both heads, and at this point, Martin has dropped a 6, while Max has dropped a 3. They then move to the copy of the spell. Martin loses the first one, taking one, and Max then loses one, and then loses the next one. They then roll for what can be lethal damage on Max, and surprisingly, all the flips come up heads, ending the process. And with nothing else, Martin passes. Martin adds another counter to his clock as Max draws. Max then plays a command tower and goes through his graveyard. He taps a decent chunk of mana for a total of 9 to cast Triumphant Reckoning, which Martin is quick to counter with Swansong. Max gets a bird token and goes to combat. The Chief and Foundry Inspector head at Martin, while the lone massive construct goes at Nick. Martin blocks the biggest one with the Locust God, and still takes 4, while Nick drops to 19 from the big hit. Max then casts a Mind Stone in his second main phase, gaining 2 life from the Monument, and passing to Nick. Nick casts Expel from Araska on Rebek, and has her go to the top of Max's library, and Max decides to instead have her go to the Command Zone. Nick then cracks the Myriad Landscape to go and find two tapped islands, and taps two of Max's flyers as they come in, thanks to the Guardian's landfall triggers. Responding to the trigger that's targeting his Ornithopter, Max taps it for one white. Nick then crews up the Sky Sovereign using the Oblivion Sower, and goes at me with both of his flyers. He bolts the Dig Site Engineer, and I take ten, exiling my top six cards. I hit no lands, so he gets nothing. In his second main phase, Nick plays out a Mystic Sanctuary, and puts on top of his library the Blue Sun Zenith that he discarded earlier. I remove a Suspend Counter from my Refrain that's in Exile, 
and play a tap Temple of Triumph, scrying one. I bottom it and cast my own Wheel of Fortune. Nick responds using a Mystic Confluence and targets to bounce the two coin flippers and max his construct, but Martin counters it with a good old fashioned counterspell. We then discard our hands and draw a fresh seven, and Nick announces that Wonder is now in his graveyard. I then tap six mana for Song of the World Soul, a card which I do have in Tristani, but have yet to be able to play it. I then cast an Anointed Procession, and populate while it's on the stack to make another one of those sweet demon tokens. I then move to combat and swing both of my tokens at Nick. Responding to the demons on attack triggers, Nick cycles a lonely sandbar and draws one. Max and Martin then die to those triggers, and Nick takes the hit for six, but unfortunately isn't dead. I know I'm dead at this point to the swing back either way, but at least I got to take out Martin and Max, and with nothing left, I scoop it up to Nick. Game review time. So pretty much I was dead at the end of that game no matter what I did, so at least I went out swinging. I'm sure some people would have said to pass to Martin to see if he had some answers, but frankly, he was probably just going to beat everyone to death with insect tokens, and I wasn't about to die to that. I was pleasantly surprised to see Max cast both of his commanders after the last time that we played this deck, and we didn't see either of them. Rebecca actually provides some pretty decent protection for his artifact creatures, and I loved seeing Forsaken Monument hitting the field. Nick's Cosima slash Omen Kill deck is easily one of my favorites that he's built in the last couple of years. It's just so cool. Mono Blue Vehicles is a pretty sweet archetype, and it seems to lack a lot of the hard control that typical other blue decks play, so he basically allows other people to do stuff, while at the same time still exiling your top cards, so somehow it doesn't feel as bad. Speaking of feel bads, I had a lot of that towards Martin, considering how many times he countered my spells. He was merciless this game, my goodness. Beyond that, he did what every coin flip deck does, which is flip coins and play silly spells that don't necessarily work all the time. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, Cool Stuff Inc., Multizone, Original Magic Art, and Alter Sleeves. But it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers, and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.